traditional meals. So if we see something like this, um, dividing fractions as easy as pi, flip the second and multiply, right, everybody? So just a reminder from last time, we have already divided polynomials by this method. So then we would have to restrict, remember with division we restrict here, here, and here. So we'd flip the second and multiply. So on top would be x squared minus x, on bottom would be x plus 2. Now when we multiply, don't we factor all the pieces, right? That's our next step, factor all the pieces. So we have x squared, we have times by x, x minus 1. Then on bottom I have x, left is x plus 2, and then um, x plus 2. Then don't we multiply straight across, but don't actually multiply everybody. So we have x squared and x. We have an x plus minus 1 on top. On bottom, I have an x, an x plus 2, and an x plus 2. Now divide out exact factors. Those divide out, don't they? So that would be it. So I didn't restrict because I'm just trying to show you we have done dividing. Now we're going to learn another, like look at it another way. What if I said simplify this? There's many ways we can do it. How do we simplify? Factor the top, factor the bottom, restrict, divide, right, everybody? Now another way, a nice thing is, if you have one term on the denominator, another way is to split it up. Meaning, as long as I divide each piece by the denominator, I'm okay. So this is the same thing as this. 12p to the fourth divided by 3p squared plus 6p cubed divided by 3p squared then minus 3p squared divided by 3p squared. Now look, why can we do that? Because think about it. As long as we keep all of them divided by the denominator, we're good. Because if we have a common denominator, can we put the numerator together? Does everybody see how that would work? Well, look why that's nice. If there's one term that's nice, because look what this would simplify to be. 12 and 3 divide out to become a 4. p to the 4th and p squared divide out to become a p squared. Good. And then we have positive 2. Then we have a p. And then we have a minus 1. And now it, didn't, it just said simplify. So it didn't say solve. So this would be our answer, right? OK, looking at this next one, if there's one term in the denominator, we can either factor the top, factor the denominator, and divide out exact factors, or split it up. So let's split this one up. You would say 6p cubed, 6p cubed divided by 2p. Um, plus 2p squared divided by 2p. Then we have plus p over 2p. Okay, let's simplify this correctly here. So 6 and 2 divide out to become a 3. Then isn't a p squared? Then we have a plus p squared. Oh, that's a p. It just didn't go. Okay, plus a p. And then we have plus, careful here. This becomes a 1 and a 1. So what would we have? Plus 1 half. Okay, good. That would be our answer. Are we all good with that? Pretty easy stuff? Okay, great. Now we're going to learn how to divide something with long division. So if we have 4x squared plus, you should be writing this down as quickly as possible. 4x squared plus 7x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. And I'm instructing you. And on the test, if I want you to divide by long division, I will specify. So I'm going to say divide by long division. So if you remember, we set up the divisor, which is what we're dividing by, x plus 3 on the outside of our little house. What's being divided is under the house. Um, okay, so these are the steps we take. We always, with long division, we only divide leading terms, everybody. This is a leading term. This is a leading term. So what you're going to do is go off to the side. I make bulletin points to show my work. So let's make a little bulletin point. We're taking this divided by this. That isn't this divided by this. So we're taking 4x squared, and we're dividing it by x. You only divide the leading terms. So what would that simplify to be? 4x. That's part of your answer. So we put on top a 4x. And I line things up. Notice x squareds are on this line, x is in this line, and then whole numbers here. So I'm going to put 4x here. It just keeps things nice and pretty. That's your first step. Now we go about what I call in a roundabout process. So now our next step is to take 4x and distribute it back down here and here. 4x times x is 4x squared, everybody. 4x times positive 3 is positive 12x. Then if you remember with long division, look, we want these 4x squareds to cancel out since we've already done the division with that. 
Well, they don't cancel out. If we add straight down, they don't add up to be zero. We need them to. So you have to remember this very important step. On this new thing down here, you've got to change the signs on those. you got to make sure you do it to both. And now what you're going to do is add straight down. 4x squared minus 4x squared becomes zero. That's how I always catch myself. If I forget to change signs, that doesn't add up to be zero. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to change the signs. Then just combine like terms. Positive 7x minus 12x. Isn't that negative 5x? Then we have 3, and there was nothing to add to 3, so we still have plus 3. Now, guys, that's the new thing under your house right here. So you just start the process over again. We only divide leading terms. This is my leading term. This is my leading term. So go off to the side, make a bulletin point. You'd say negative 5x, that leading term, divided by that leading term, which would be negative 5, right? So that's part of our answer. We're just going about in a roundabout process. So I put negative 5 on top. So right now we have 4x minus 5. Now what you're going to do is do the same thing. Go around, around, around. Take negative 5, distribute here and here. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times positive 3 is negative 15. Is everybody okay so far? Now we need these fives to cancel out. They don't as is, so we need to change the sign, change the sign on that new thing. Now add straight down. Zero. And now we have 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 18. Now look, that's the new thing under our house. If I go off to the side and make a bulletin point and do 18 divided by x, it doesn't divide wholly. It doesn't divide anymore. We've got to stop. It doesn't divide, so that must have been our remainder. So our remainder was 18, everybody. Now, this is how we write the remainder in our answer. So we have 4x minus 5, and then we add our remainder back onto that, and I'll show you how you write it. So it was positive 18, so we're adding 18 when we divided by x plus 3. That's just how we write it. So we had a remainder of 18 when we divided by x plus 3. So our answer, which is also called the quotient, is this. Now everybody, think about this. If we have a remainder of 18, that means that this x plus 3 did not divide perfectly. If it did divide perfectly, our remainder would have been 0, if you can remember from last year. So we know, if I asked you, is x plus 3 a factor of this, you would say no, because the remainder wasn't 0. Now isn't it true, though? that if the remainder was zero, that this times this would equal this, right, everyone? So we know that from just how multiplication and division work. Because think about it, guys, look. If I say two and six, and you divide six by two, you get three. Isn't it true that two times three equals what's underneath? Yes? So that's why, and that would be the remainder would, be, would have ended up being zero. Okay, awesome. So x plus three is not a factor. So my question for you is, is negative 3 a solution to this? No, or else the remainder would have been 0. Just making sure we understand what we're actually doing. Okay, cool. Okay, let's do another one with long division. It's always those same steps every single time. So you say, okay, looking at this, my divisor is 3x plus 2. That's what goes on the outside of my little house. Then I have 6x cubed minus 11x squared, minus 7x plus 2. Now the nice thing is, guys, long division always works. You can use it for any dividing that you are given, no matter what. So we do need to be able to do it. Because in a minute we're going to do synthetic division, which is way quicker, but you can only use it in very small cases. Okay, so we divide our leading terms. So you come off to the side, make a bulletin point. 6x cubed divided by 3x is... 2x squared. If you do your math like this, like me, then I can kind of check your work a lot easier. So we have 2x squared. Then my next step is to distribute. We're going around in a circle here. 2x squared times positive 3x is positive 6x cubed. Don't try to do two steps in one. You'll mess up. Like people will change the sign as they go, but don't do it. Just go with it and then change the sign. 2x squared times positive 2. Wouldn't that be positive 4x squared, everyone? Now we have to remember to change the sign, change the sign, and add straight down. 
the 6x cubed are gone, which is what we needed. And then negative 11x squared minus 4x squared is negative 15x squared. Then I have a minus 7x. Then I have a plus 2. And now we're just doing our leading term again. Our leading term, our leading term. Bulletin point. Negative 15x squared divided by 3x is negative 5x. That's what goes on top. Minus 5x. Then we'll take negative 5x. Distribute. Distribute. So negative 5x times 3x is, right now, negative 15x squared. Negative 5x times positive 2 is negative... 10x. Then we change the sign, change the sign, add straight down. 15x squared are gone. Then we have plus 3x. Or just 3x. Same thing. And then we have a plus 2. Now we divide our leading terms. Bulletin point. 3x divided by 3x is positive 1. So we have a plus 1. Just around again, around again. Positive 1, multiply it down, is 3x. Positive 1 times positive 2 is positive 2. Then we change the sign, change the sign, add straight down. 0, 0. So our remainder is 0. So we're done. That's our answer. So isn't it true that I could say if I wanted, isn't it true to say 3x plus 2 times by 2x squared well, minus 5x plus 1 is equal to what was what this, right, everyone? Is equal to what's underneath. That is true. Now look, didn't that actually technically factor it once? There's one factor, and then we could continue factoring if possible. Do you guys see? Okay, cool. That's our answer, though. Okay, awesome. The only thing I'm going to ask you is, in this next, not this one, we're going to look at this one. Okay, looking at this one, would we be able to do it? How would we do it? Yeah. Yeah, good. We need to put it in order. We need to put it in standard form. Way to go. So we would just put this in standard form and then just go about our roundabout process. Now, there's a lot more terms here. Do you need another example or are you guys seeing the process here? Just go around, 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 around. Yeah? Okay, awesome. I don't want to waste your time because I think practicing is going to be the best for you for this. Do you think you could do something with something other than just linear? Same thing, right? It's the exact same thing. The only reason I wanted to show you this, oh, I don't even know if this one does. You guys, you can get a remainder with a variable in it. So, do you want to see one like that? Okay. Okay, but what I mean by that is, let's say that we went through and did this. Um, so, let's say we had this, guys. Let me just show you. X squared minus 2. And then, and I won't go through the whole thing. I'll just show you. So we have x to the fifth, minus 5x to the fourth, making sure I don't mess up all my signs, minus 2x cubed. Then it's plus 12x squared, and then it's plus 2. So let's say I went through and did all the division, and I got to an answer. Let's pretend that I got um, x plus 3, and then I needed to do another division. So let's say I went off to the side, and we know we divide our leading terms. x divided by x squared. Let's say we got to that point. Do you guys see how they don't divide evenly anymore? It would be like one over, like they don't divide evenly anymore. So our answer, this would have been our remainder. We would have had to stop. So we would have had whatever, um, an answer, and then we would have said plus x plus 3 when we divided by x squared minus 2. So it works the exact same way. It's just there's a variable. Does that make sense? It just didn't divide anymore. Okay, so I won't go through that whole one. Practice a few with long division real quick. Before I go on to synthetic division, so you're on lesson um, 5.3, go do the ones that with the instructions of use long division to divide. And practice a couple before we move on. So we gotta be quick. Like I'm only gonna be able to let you practice for like two problems, so go, go, go. Got it. So synthetic division is just another way of dividing. It's much quicker than long division. The only problem is we can only use it in very rare occasions. Here is the rule. So. If you can remember, to use synthetic division, what you're dividing by, not the top, the top can be anything. The bottom, however, look, the x minus three, the bottom has to be one, linear, meaning degree one, everyone. And it has to have, so it has to be degree one, and it has to have a leading coefficient of positive one. One and one. So, right here, could I use synthetic? One and one, yes. Could I use 
use synthetic here? No, it's degree two. Could I use synthetic here? No, there's a two in front. Yeah, it's linear, but it's not one. It has to be one and one. Do we all understand that? Yes? Okay, so now this is a totally different process. Instead of using the actual numbers, first of all, with dividing, we use the zero, the solution. So if x minus 3 is what we're dividing by, set it equal to 0, we're, we're using the solution, the actual answers, which is different than long division. So we'd add 3. So x equals 3. We're using positive 3. We're using the 0 or the solution. So you're going to put in a 3, and you're going to make an upside-down box with some room underneath and in here. I made it big like that on purpose, so draw that in. So then you're just going to put in, instead of putting in the whole number, you just put in the coefficient. So we'll put in a 2. Then we'll put in a negative 5. Then a negative 7. Then a positive 20. And then one more thing you need to check. Were you missing any terms? Meaning, when you're putting in these coefficients, degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, constant. If you would have been missing, let's say that this would have not been there, you would have needed to put a zero right here. Otherwise, you're going to get, get the wrong answer. You'll still get an answer, it'll just be wrong. Everybody understand? Okay. So then what we do is, this is the rule for synthetic division. Add, add straight down, multiply up. Add straight down, multiply up. So, 2 plus nothing is 2. We add straight down, multiply up. So now we're going to multiply up. 2 times 3 is? Six, we put it right here, we add straight down. Add straight down, multiply up. Add straight down, multiply up. And that pattern continues. So when we add straight down, we get one. One times three is three. Add straight down, multiply up. So negative seven plus three is negative four. Negative four times three is negative 12, wasn't it? Add straight down, positive Eight. Now this is what you would check next. What was my ha what was I dividing by? So degree three, degree three divided by degree one. Look, everyone, x cubed divided by x isn't that x squared? So we now have a quadratic. It is x squared. Sorry, two x squared. This is a coefficient. This is two x squared. That's positive one, so plus one x, and then minus four. So this must be our remainder. The last final thing will, will always be your remainder as long as you've set it up right. So our remainder is 8, so you'd say plus 8 when we divided by x minus 3. If you can recall, we divided by x minus 3. So we write the answer the same way, it's just a different way of getting there. So my question for you is, is 3 a solution? No. Is x minus 3 a factor? No. But we can still divide it, it's just not a pretty answer. And that's our answer. Way quicker. Synthetic division. Another one. Let's see if we should do a bit. Let's just do this one. Here you go. So we would use the solution. So we would be using x equals 5. We'd put in our 5. Then we're going to make sure we aren't missing anything. 4, 3, 2, 1, constant. Okay, so we put in our 1, negative 5, negative 6, 33, negative 15. Add straight down, multiply up. Add straight down, multiply up. 1 plus nothing is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Add straight down, we get 0 times 5 is? We add straight down, we multiply up. So we have negative 6, don't we? Negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Add straight down, we get 3. 3 times 5 is? 15. Add straight down, we get? Zero. Isn't that our remainder? The last one's always the remainder. Now look, degree four divided by degree one would be degree three. So this is one x cubed, looks like no x squared, minus six x plus three, and our remainder is zero. So that's our answer. So now isn't it true if I really, if I said then write that, if it is, if I said um, do synthetic division to see if x minus five is a factor. If it is, write Write it as a product of two factors. Write the original as a product of two factors. Wouldn't it be true to say that x minus 5 times x cubed minus 6x plus 3 is equal to that long thing? Right, everyone? Okay, awesome.
Just if I asked you to do it. Well, it's just, that's always how it works, right? Whatever we divide by, if the remainder is zero, whatever our answer is times whatever we divided by would be the answer to our original. It would say, write it as a product, it would say of two factors. Yeah. So we wouldn't even need to go further because that's the two factors. Does that make sense? Because we might be able to factor that more, but unless it asks us to, we wouldn't. Great questions. Okay, I think we get the picture here. So, I, how do you, do you feel like you get the picture? Yes? Mm -hmm. No? Synthetic division? Okay, here is a quick the remainder theorem. So just, it's really actually easy. The remainder theorem is um, a way to find the remainder, an alternate way to finding the remainder. So if I said to you, what's the remainder? You could do synthetic division or long division and just tell me the remainder, right? Go through the whole process and say, oh, I did it, and my remainder came out to be 10. Or you could do it another way. So that's what the remainder theorem is. I'll show you. So right here, if I said, what's the remainder? You could say, well, I'm going to use synthetic division with negative 3. I have a 2. I'm missing x squared, so I need a 0, then a negative 3, then an 8. So she's asking me to find the remainder. So I add straight down, multiply up, add straight down, multiply up, right? Am I doing okay? Did I mess up anywhere? And then add straight down, so that'd be 15, right? Multiply up, negative 45. Add straight down, isn't that negative 37? So you'd say, oh, my remainder is negative 37. That's one way of doing it. That's great. Remainder is negative 37. Now, the remainder theorem is an alternate way to finding the remainder, like I said. So let's say you didn't do synthetic division. Another way to do it is to take the solution, negative 3, and plug it into the function. Plug in negative 3. Whatever you calculate will be what the remainder would have come out to be. So if I plug in 2 times negative 3 cubed minus 3 times negative 3 plus 8, I calculate that on my calculator and I get negative 37. So you'd say, well, the remainder theorem, it says it's negative 37. Well, and synthetic division showed that to be true as well. You can do it either way. I don't care how you do it. I like synthetic division better. I think that's quicker for me personally. So it will say like this. Let me show you. So that's like they call it x minus c. So x minus 3. So c would have been 3. You guys see why? Because they set it equal to 0 and they solve. So it would have been 3. Because I'm plugging in. Oh, wait. Was it plus 3? Uh-oh. It was plus 3. My bad. So our c would have been negative 3. Right, everyone? Okay. Awesome. I think we get the picture, so go ahead and start working on that lesson before we move on. I don't think you need any more examples. If you do, let me know. No? Yes. Go do some synthetic division ones. 